Hello and good morning once again, options traders. Well, we got a good question from one of the traders in our group who asked about managing long puts during volatile markets, which is certainly a good question for these uh, couple of months we've had here in April and May of 2022. But it was really a two part question. It was one about managing long puts, but also about when to exercise. Is there a time that it might be advantageous and maybe a time that you shouldn't exercise? So while it's a great question, there's a lot of details and nuances to really give a full detailed answer. But I at least wanted to point you in the direction of giving you some ideas to think about for managing these puts during volatile markets. So as always, before we get started, please click like. It goes a long way in promoting the channel and is very much appreciated. So the first thing to keep in mind during volatile periods is that if you're buying puts during high volatility, you're paying high implied volatility. Now that's going to be true whether we're talking about calls or puts, but because of skews, the puts are usually much, much higher than the corresponding calls. By corresponding, I mean if you're five points out of the money for the put, there's a certain implied volatility. And if you go five points out of the money for the calls, there is another implied volatility. And the implied volatility for the puts is usually going to be a whole lot higher. And that usually only gets worse or more extreme as you go further away from at the money. And unfortunately, when most traders are trying to trade puts during these volatile times, because these puts get so expensive, they do that. They go 10, 15, 20 points out of the money. And they don't realize that you are really paying a lot for that in terms of implied volatility. So why does that matter? Well, if you're buying high implied volatility, you need fast, aggressive moves before you're going to see profits. If the stock slowly moves in your direction, starts heading lower, probably not going to be all that profitable because you're going to have very rapid time decay. Again, because of this high implied volatility. So because of this, you don't want to close for small gains. I just talked about this recently, and I've talked about it many times before where we hear so many traders saying, oh, you've got to take those quick gains because you can't go broke taking a profit. And as I showed in a recent video, that's simply not true. It's absolutely a mathematical fallacy to think that when you get into volatile periods that you need to take very small gains. So that's one thing you have to watch for during high volatility. Don't pay through the nose for high implied volatility and then cash out for small gains. If you do that in the long run, and actually probably a very <laughs> short run too, you are going to end up on the losing side. So the problem comes that during high volatility that we have expectations for what the highs and low stock prices will be. So let's say that this is the put strike that we have. And based on the current volatility, we think this is about the highest price that we could see, maybe plus two standard deviations. And down here in red might be minus two standard deviations. So if you're watching the stock, as it meanders around here, what traders do is they go, oh, as soon as my put goes in the money, I want to take those profits. And especially if it ever starts going out of the money, like it did here or here, then they panic. And they say, oh, the next time it goes in the money, I'm cashing out. And so they end up taking these very small profits. And yet when you back up and look at the bird's eye view, you'll say, well, I really thought it could have been this high or this low. Why are we cashing out down here? It makes no sense to pay super high prices and then cash out just because the put option has gone a little bit in the money. There's a very good chance you're going to see these really big moves, which is presumably why you bought the put in the first place. So the big question is how can we stay in the position and have a better chance at capturing these big gains, not these picking up nickels in front of bulldozers type of gains, but picking up the real gains, but also managing the risk. So the first thing that you've got to remember is to roll your puts down. So let's say that you buy the $100 put for eight bucks and it starts moving in your favor. What you can do is you can go into your broker's platform and just sell the 95 100 put spread. Now in previous videos, I've talked about when you're rolling, you'd kind of like to capture 80% of the difference in strikes. So in this case, 
because you are technically selling a spread, there's a five point difference in strikes. 80% of that would be four bucks. But during high volatility, that's going to be very difficult to get unless you wait very close to expiration, but then that defeats the whole purpose. So you might say, okay, let me get $2.50 or three bucks. Might not be ideal, but it's the best you can do during high volatility. So when this is all over and done, when this trade executes, you're just going to be long the $95 put at an effective cost of five. And that's because you spent eight and you collected three. So what happens is your risk graph went from this in black, here's our max loss at eight with our bend at 100, and we've now shifted up to this in red. We now have a bend at 95, we're long the 95 put, we still have unlimited downside, but we've managed the risk down here. Now my maximum loss is five. See how this red line lines up right there at minus five. We used to line up here at minus eight. So this is a risk management technique. What else can you do? Well, I've talked about sell half and roll half. Maybe if you're long 10 puts, you could sell 10 and roll down five. And so you might go from the black to the blue. And in fact, if you get a, even a fairly decent move in your favor, you might be able to shift completely above zero as we've done here in this blue line. Notice that the entire blue line sits above zero. Now you can't lose. What's the trade-off? Well, your deltas are a little bit lower. It's not quite as steep through here as it was on either the red or the black lines. So again, if you had 10 puts, you would actually have negative 1,000 deltas here, and now maybe you've got negative 500. All right, well, that's still okay because you're holding out for much, much bigger gains, but at least you've got all of your money back and a nice little profit to show for it. So that's another really handy technique, selling half and rolling half. Now there's another problem that can crop up if you are buying puts to protect shares of stock. What I just got done talking about was more for speculation where you just buy a put option outright. But let's say you bought a put as an insurance policy against shares of stock. And this becomes our stock price through here. Well, I've talked about this before where you could either buy the put or you could set a stop. And the problem with the stop is that it is absolutely going to trigger you out if the stock price trades at or below that level. And so now you end up selling your shares at the worst time. See, one of the big benefits of a put option is that you're not gonna get triggered out down here. It's up to you to exercise. And so just in case the stock heads back up, you didn't sell your shares. But if it continues a lot lower, you can always exercise. So if you're buying puts to protect shares of stock, it is critically important that you do not let that insurance policy go, especially like right in the midst of it. It'll be tempting, especially because you might have a profit, but remember what your goal is as an insurance policy against those shares. Ideally, if you're buying a put as insurance, you'd like to see it expire worthless. So we don't know that just because the stock dipped down here, maybe it ends way up here, like we did after we came out of COVID. And now you're going to be glad to see that put option expire worthless. But if you exercised it or cashed it in, you've lost that opportunity. So in this case, remember that stock plus put is synthetically the same thing as a long call. You are ultimately bullish. Hang on to that all the way till expiration. And finally, the third thing to consider during periods of high volatility is to use spreads. This is definitely one of my favorite techniques and I think is true among all professional traders. So again, if you're paying high volatility, you can sell high volatility against it and that will tend to mitigate it. So you might use a vertical spread, diagonal spread, calendar spread, and there's a whole lot of things you have to be concerned about here with SKUs and whether you're trading in the trough or not. And I've talked about those briefly in previous videos, but just understand just because you're using some type of spread during high volatility doesn't mean that you're necessarily out of the weeds, but it will certainly help. So those are some things to consider for managing the risk. But what about part two of the question? What about exercising your puts? Well, the only reason for exercising a put option early is to gain cash to earn interest. And even then you wanna make sure that that put option has 
very little and preferably no extrinsic value. So that means it would have to be deep in the money. Let's say that you buy a $100 put, doesn't even matter what you paid for it, but now the stock is trading at 80. So this puts 20 bucks in the money and you look at this on your broker's platform and it's trading for exactly 20 bucks, which means there's no extrinsic value or maybe very little. It's trading for $20.10. So in a case like this, if you are exercising your put, remember this assumes that you have the stock. That would be the reason for exercising it. And if there's no extrinsic value, okay, you might say, listen, this put is so deep in the money, I don't see that there's any hope for it to go out of the money to where it's actually a benefit for me, like we just talked about, where the stock would become far more profitable than the put. But once you get to a point of no return, usually when that delta is pretty close to negative one, you say, all right, let's go ahead and cash in. The reason that it doesn't necessarily pay to cash out early is that you can always exercise to gain the $100 cash. You're not really getting more money by exercising early. All you're doing is getting the money in your hands early so that you can earn interest. So for example, let's say that here's our timeline and here is today. And if you exercise today, you get a hundred bucks today. You drop it in your money market and it earns interest over time. And maybe it turns out to be $101 at expiration. But had you waited until expiration to exercise, you just were going to collect a hundred bucks. So you can always get the hundred. You could get a hundred today. You could get a hundred at expiration. But if there's a chance that that stock might come back to life, you're much better off just holding on to the put. So again, the only reason for exercising a put early is that it is super deep in the money, little to no extrinsic value, and you have to be earning some type of interest from your broker. If your broker is paying zero interest, or at least to where it's not going to amount to anything over the next 30 or 60 days, no reason in the world to exercise that put option early. Now, as one final note, what if you did have extrinsic value? What if this put were trading for 21 bucks and you wanted the cash for some reason, whether it was to earn interest or to put it to use in a different area for another investment? Well, sell the put, let's say for 21, sell the stock for 80. Now you've got $101 today instead of 100. See, that's why it would always make more sense to just sell the stock and the put because the put always has to be worth at least intrinsic. So those two numbers together always have to add up to 100 once it's in the money. But if it adds up to more than that, you're better off just selling them individually and then investing that cash. So if you are even thinking of exercising a put option early, make sure you have very little extrinsic value, preferably none, and that you can earn some type of interest. And if not, it is definitely in your best interest to just hang on to the put and exercise it at expiration. Give that stock a chance to maybe come back to life. After all, it is a high volatility environment. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. You can find it all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.